So we're in this sermon series talking about faith. And uh, this message will probably be a little bit different than first service's message because first service message was sort of a step of faith. I got halfway through my sermon and realized that all the pages were out of order. They were all mixed up. I had half of the notes from from Janet in the back, half of my own notes. And so... uh, we, we rolled with it a little bit. It was a step of faith. And this morning we're talking about faith, steps of faith. What does that even mean? A leap of faith. And there's some stereotypes that sort of get us off track, that, that make it so it's confusing what it ev- that word even means, faith. One of the stereotypes, one of the common beliefs uh, in our culture is that faith is basically believing in something despite the evidence or proofs. And so an example of this kind of faith that we sometimes hear about that is sometimes expressed in our culture is this this picture of imagining a friend that you have who's a big time superhero fan. They've seen all the superhero movies. They love it. And then after watching all of these superhero movies, that friend tells you, you know what? I believe, I have faith that if I put on a mask and a cape, I'll be able to fly, right? I watch people do it on the movies all the time. And so they tell you, oh, watch this. I'm gonna put on a a cape and a mask and I can fly. And you're probably immediately, alarm bells are like, wait a minute, wait, 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 are you sure? But This idea of faith that's so often in our culture, believing in something despite the proof or evidence, it looks like a step of faith, of that kind of faith, is basically putting on that cape and then crawling up to the top of the house and, right, jumping off the porch. And you probably know how that story ends. You've probably seen YouTube videos of people doing that. In fact, this last week, I watched a video of a guy with an umbrella a big umbrella, and he went up to his porch, he was on the roof, and he says, watch, I'm Mary Poppins, and he jumped off, and the umbrella immediately just turned inside out, and he just, he cratered, right? He cratered full speed, and and see, that's that picture of faith, that stereotype that we hear about in our culture of faith that's believing in something despite the evidence and proof. Now, last week, we investigated together what scripture says, how scripture defines faith. And it's not that at all, right? Uh, In fact, to summarize everything we talked about last week in one sentence, it would be faith is trusting that God keeps his promises. Faith is trusting that God keeps his promises. That's that's basically the, the definition that scripture's using for us. Faith is knowing that God is faithful. Now, this kind of faith is not that blind faith. It's not that stereotype faith. In fact, believing that, that believing God is faithful, this chapter we're in in Hebrews 11, it goes on to list over 20 examples for us, over 20 pieces of evidence of moments that, that God has been faithful, faithful over and over and over to keep his promises. Now, last week we defined faith. We looked at what that word means. And this week we're looking together what it means to take a step of faith. What does it mean to take a step of faith? What does it mean to put our faith into action? What does it mean to have an active and functional faith? A faith that's alive. What does it mean to take a step of faith? Now what may surprise people, surprised a few first services, is that we We actually take steps of faith all day, every day. You've already taken multiple steps of faith this morning. In fact, you're you're sitting in a chair right now. And when you sat down in that chair, you took a step of faith. You, You trusted the promise of the manufacturer that that chair would support your weight, that it'd support you. Or you took another step of faith You trusted in the promise of an engineer who told you that when you turn the key to your car, that fuel air explosion that's happening in the engine, that it would be safe. Now, think of such, that is a huge step of faith. When you turn the key, that is a huge step of faith. You are igniting a bomb in your car when you turn the key, the detonator, right? Right? 
while sitting on top of the fuel tank, the explosives. It's a huge step of faith every time you turn the key. You're sitting on a highly flammable liquid. You know, some of you are like, Michael, why do you say things like that? Oh, man, this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel weird getting back in the car. And, uh, and I, okay, I have to give you a warning. First service, there was a couple, right? After the service, don't turn and nudge your spouse and say, honey, would you start the car for me? You know? <laughs> no, 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 they're on you. Uh, no, every time we turn the key, it's a step of faith. We're trusting the promise of the engineer who said, this bomb will not blow up. It will start an engine. When you got up this morning and turned on your light switch, you, you trusted in the promise of the electrician who wired your house and said, hey, this isn't going to short circuit and start a fire. See, what may surprise people is that we take steps of faith all day long, every day. It's just that our faith in those examples, our faith is in engineers, the promise of engineers, the promise of electricians, the promise of manufacturers that, that they will keep their promises. Now, what does it look like to take a step of faith that God will keep his promises for us? Let's read our passage for this morning. We'll look at a few examples. So Hebrews chapter 11 we're going to be picking up in verse 7. It says the following. By faith, Noah, when warned about the things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he, con he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. And by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. And by faith, he had made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. Now all of these examples, these examples are our faith is trusting that God keeps his promises. They're trusting that God keeps his promises. And a step of faith, what it is that they're doing in these passages is basically responding to God's promises, knowing that they will come true. A step of faith is when we act in accordance to the promise that God has given us. As if what God's saying is, is, is true. It's going to happen. So we see these examples with Noah. Noah. That first one, book of Genesis, right? Noah, God warns him that a giant flood is coming. Like, prepare yourself, get ready. God makes this warning. He had never seen a flood like this before, right? But Noah responds by faith, and he starts building a giant boat to save his family because he believed that God would keep his word, that God's promise was true. And Abraham, God promises Abraham basically a way back to the Garden of Eden, this promised land, this idea, right? And Abraham responds by faith, and he literally starts walking. It's like, how do I get back there? Where am I going? I don't know. God made this promise. He's going to come through for me. I'm going to take a step. I'm going to start walking. And Sarah this passage, God promises Sarah a child. And that seemed flat out impossible. But verse 11 talks about how, how she considered him faithful who had made the promise. I don't know how. God made this promise, and he's true to his promises. And so what does that mean? That means Sarah responds by faith, right? And so we don't know exactly all the details, but that means she probably started knitting a baby blanket, right? God makes this promise. 
And he's true to his promises. She tells Abraham, start assembling the cradle, right? Like this is happening. God comes through for those things he promises. And that step of faith is this response saying, yes, that is true. Well, let's read, as we read our passage this morning, we were looking at examples of a step of faith. It's when we respond to God's promises. A step of faith is when we act in accordance to what the promises that God has given us. So, what are the promises that God has made to you, to us? What are some of those promises? Well, Jesus makes a lot of big claims. So what would it look like if we responded to some of these things that Jesus claims, these statements, knowing that what Jesus claims will come true? What Jesus promises, he keeps his promises. Just listen to one example here. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now we read a passage like that, we hear a passage like that, and some of us here are weary and burdened. And we hear we hear those words, Jesus say, come to me, I will give you rest. But we don't quite believe what he's saying. We don't really trust that Jesus will keep that promise. And so instead, we go out and try to make that true on our own effort. We believe, man, if, if I just work a bit more, Maybe I'll, I'll finally find rest. If I get it to that promotion, then I'll be secure. Then, I, then I'll be able to rest. If I can just make it past the holidays, it's always this busy season, then I'll find rest for my soul. And don't you see? Those are all leaps of faith. Those are all leaps of faith. Those are all steps of faith that we can fix our situation better than Jesus can. Instead, how would it look different if, if our step of faith was towards the promise that Jesus is making in this passage? To believe that Jesus will keep this promise. Well, when he says, come to me and I will give you rest, maybe that means responding to that, believing that's true. Maybe that means in the mornings, carving out a little time every day. Start our morning by faith. Just praying and asking Jesus, will you, will you give to me that kind of peace in my life? Maybe that means by faith, starting to implement healthy boundaries around our work. This thing over here isn't going to save me. Maybe by faith, that means starting to dedicate one day a week just to spend time in Lord's presence. Like carve out that space. You know, in the Old Testament, this was called taking a Sabbath. Sabbath rest, a day where they would stop working and remember God. Now, if you think that the Sabbath is not a leap of faith, you're not picturing first century Judaism very well, right? In ancient agrarian culture where they live hand to mouth. And just picture, like, out in the field is all of your crops. It's all of your food. And you don't know what tomorrow's weather is going to be like. It could freeze. It could hail tomorrow. You could lose it all. And the step of faith is to stop, sit on your hands, Spend time with the Lord, trusting that he will provide, trusting that he will take care. Man, sometimes pausing and resting is a huge step of faith, a response to God's provision and promises. When we respond to God's promises, knowing that they will be true, that he is faithful, that's what a step of faith is. Some of us here are weary and burdened. And we hear those words of Jesus, come to me and I will give you rest. Rest that will recharge your life more than the best night's sleep. Rest for your soul. Now to those who are worried and anxious, Jesus makes more pretty big claims 
statements. He says in Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6, verse 28, And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly Father knows you that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now it's surreal to think. And it spent a while thinking about this this last week. You know, I outlined these messages, this whole series, months ago. Like this message, months ago, had a summary on it. What we were going to be talking about. And long before the announcements at the mine of the layoffs even came around. And I'll be honest, this week, writing this message, I contemplated removing this passage that I just read from you, for you from this message. I wasn't sure those who were losing their jobs, how a passage like this would sound, would struggle with, would wrestle with, the reason I did not remove this passage from that outline is because it's exactly the promise that we need to hear. It's the, this is the style of commit. These words that Jesus speaks to us, like, are you worried and anxious? What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to wear? How will I meet my basic needs? Sometimes we hear Jesus say, your heavenly Father knows those needs, turn to him. But we don't really believe that Jesus will keep that promise. We wrestle. We struggle. We've got worry and anxiety just overflowing in our life. A step of faith. A step of faith is when we respond to God's promises knowing they're going to be true. It's a step of faith is when we read a passage like that and we recognize Jesus said that and he keeps his word. That's a promise he keeps. Now to clarify, sometimes we hear Jesus say, your heavenly father knows how to meet those needs. Turn to him. And then we think to ourselves, well, that means I don't have to do anything. I just, I just sit on my hands. I'm done, right? Uh, and that would be similar to like Abraham. Remember when God promised him the promised land? He just sat down and didn't go anywhere. He said, beam me up, Scotty. Right? Like, but that, that's kind of how we respond sometimes. We say, oh, a step of faith is, it's in God's hands. I'm not going to do anything. But each one of these examples involves a response. It involves taking a step towards that promise. And the crazy part is in this passage, Abraham doesn't even know where he's going. He says, that's a promise that's going to be true. And he takes a step towards it. Abraham started walking. He wasn't anxious or worried. He was trusting in this promise, even though he didn't know where he was going. Verse 8. See, to believe what Jesus is saying, your heavenly Father knows your needs. He knows how to meet those needs. Turn to him. Well, by faith, that step of faith, man, when we start getting worried or anxious, that means that we, we pause and we pray, pray over those anxieties, surrender them to God, place them in his hands. That's what he's talking about in this passage. Now, a little side note, a little side note, um, have you ever had a friend who gave you something, maybe for Christmas or your birthday, and then, you know, like a month later, they asked for it back? 
right? It's kind of awkward. If that's ever happened to you, they give you a tool or they give you some clothes and then they turn around and say, actually, I want that back. Uh, could you give me that back? It's, it's really awkward. And, and yet that's how some of us act in our prayer life, right? When we're worried or anxieties, we do this. We, we say, God, I trust you. I'm going to give it. I'm going to put it in your hands only to take it back from him, right? Only to ask for it back. And that that step of faith is placing it in his hands. And then the next step of faith looks like keeping it in his hands. And the step of faith out of that looks like, man, starting to look and say, God, how are you going to fulfill these needs? How will you meet my basic needs? Starting to look for his plan for your provision starting to look for the open doors that he's creating, starting to walk like Abraham, even though we might not know where we're going. To the weary and burdened, Jesus makes promises. Jesus makes promises for rest for our souls. To those who are worried and anxious, he makes even more promises. He, he makes commitments. He tells us that our heavenly Father knows how to meet those needs. So turn to him. You know, those aren't, this, we haven't even got to the big promises that Jesus makes to us. The big promises. You ready for a big one? John chapter 14, verse 1 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Now, if we pause, that is a huge promise. A wild promise, right? It's one thing to say, meet basic daily needs. It's one thing to say, hey, rest, rest for your souls. But what would it look like if we responded to that promise that Jesus makes? Knowing that when Jesus claims something, it will be true. Knowing that he keeps his promises. I love Hebrews chapter 11. We're kind of going through it, reading through it. And the very next segment of Hebrews chapter 11 is probably my favorite part of the entire book. Uh, It, well, I'll just read it for you. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 says, all these people, all these heroes of the Old Testament, all these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of a country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. A step of faith is when we respond to these promises that God makes. We respond and say, this is true. He's faithful to those words. In that passage we read, it talked about how God has been preparing a city for them. They were awaiting this thing. And Jesus makes a similar commitment to us. Jesus is preparing a place for you. And responding to that promise is called a step of faith. Now in this Hebrews 11 passage, it mentioned how these ancient people responded to that promise that God's preparing a place for us. Said things like they admitted. Admitting that although this world can be great, that ultimately I'm a foreigner and stranger on this earth. Responding to that promise, they started looking. They started looking. Looking for the ways that God was going to fulfill those words. Looking for God to open the doors and be guiding them. Even if they didn't know where they were going. 
They started longing. Longing. Are you eagerly awaiting this place that Jesus is promising to us? This place he's preparing for you? Like, do you daydream of heaven? On our worst days, on those crummy days, does it seem to awaken your appetite for these things that Jesus is talking about? And I love this, this section of Hebrews chapter 11 because Jesus is preparing a place for us. And if we let that promise sink down into our core, the response we'll have to that promise is similar to the response that Abraham, Noah, Sarah, I mean, those Old Testament heroes, they start admitting, they start looking, they start longing. They start taking a step of faith. This week, I would challenge you. I would challenge you just to be looking through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Start looking through there, reading through there, and I want you to find one of those commitments, one of those statements, one of those promises that Jesus makes And maybe it's one of the ones that we read this morning, even. But I want you to find one of those promises that Jesus makes, those commitments, and I want you to spend 10 minutes just praying over that promise. Praying, asking God to be guiding you, helping you know how to respond to that promise this week ahead. Asking God to help you to know how to take a step of faith this week ahead towards that promise. This morning, we have seen examples of what that might look like in your life. In the coming weeks, as we continue going through Hebrews, there, like good news, there's going to be even more examples of what it means to take these steps in faith. All of these characters that you start hearing about, one of the common themes you're going to be hearing in, in Hebrews 11 is that God made them a promise. God said something. They believed it. They just didn't hear it. They believed that it was going to be true. That God would keep that promise. And so they respond. I challenge you this week to be thinking about, to grab hold of one of those promises, commitments that Jesus makes to you. Be praying over, what does that mean? To see that as true. To respond. Take a step of faith. Let's pray together. My Father, reading through that passage, I pray that we would that we would share those same words that were spoken about Sarah. And Sarah faced an impossible challenge in front of her. There's no way I could have a kid. I'm way too old. This is impossible. But you made her a promise. And it says that she considered you faithful who had made the promise. She knew it was going to happen. She knew you never break a promise. I pray this week ahead that we would be more than and hearers, listeners of these promises that you make to us, but that they would sink into our core. This, this is a promise that God's going to keep. Jesus, when you say you will find rest for your soul, that's a promise that you keep 100% of the time. pray that you'd help us to respond to that promise, even if it's just an inch forward, even if it's as faith as small as a mustard seed, even if we say, oh, I can only, I'm I'm just one tiny little step. Man, that is the kind of faith you can move mountains with, you can do incredible things with. So I pray that that would be a faith that is growing in our hearts and in our lives, that we would hear these promises you make to us. And it would begin to sink in.
that you keep your promises. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.